Hello everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. I'm here once again with Leon from Gigabytes and we're here to talk about the new Gigabyte Z97 series of motherboards. And to that end, we have a demonstration of the software and we're also going to go into the UEFI a little bit as well. So, Leon, when it comes to a design standpoint from the actual software side as opposed to the hardware side for motherboards, uh, what types of actions do you want to make it easier for people to use once they've actually built the system based on one of these motherboards? Well, we've actually included a lot of different softwares um, in our App Center. Okay. App Center should be our main software, and we actually have different features in this App Center to allow users to actually have easier functionality as well as convenience in their system. So there's certain elements are, that are built into the motherboard that you might not even, maybe you know they're there, but actually going and using them once right. you've got the system set up, easing that process is going to make sure that people get the most out of their system. Correct. And we're going to show you guys what we have, uh, just a quick rundown of what there is on this system, and maybe you guys can try it out when you do get your 9 series gigabyte motherboard. Okay, and uh, actually specifically motherboard wise, what are we working with right now? Right now we're working with a Gaming 3, okay. but the App Center is available for all of our 9 series motherboards, so you'll find some if not all of these features in your system after you've installed it. Excellent, so uh, right now we have booted up into Windows 8, and um, uh, I guess we can just start from the beginning. Right. How, how do you get to the App Center? Okay, so this is our actually Windows 8.1. 8.1. Uh, you can actually see the tiles. This is native to Windows 8 and 8.1. We're just going to click into the desktop right here. And you can actually see that we have this start bar. And usually Windows 8 doesn't give you that start bar. And a lot of people, uh, they actually they miss it. They find it very convenient. You can actually click that, go to all your programs. You know, you have your My Computer, Desktop, uh, Documents, Pictures, Music, and Gigabyte has actually incorporated all of these features in Smart Switch. Okay. So you can actually click your start bar, use Windows 8 or 8.1 as you would Windows 7 with all the convenience and functionality of it, but at the same time with some of the newer features that you see in Windows 8 or 8.1. Excellent. Not something you necessarily expect to come along with the motherboard, but uh, giving folks a little bit more of the older Windows 7 right. functionality within Windows 8. Um, I know that's something that, I, that I, I definitely look for. Right. So, and not only that, uh, because Windows 8 and 8.1 always boots to the Metro tiles, you actually have a setting here which allows you to choose your default screen when you boot your system. Okay. So we're going to click, um, we're switching it over to desktop now. So later we're going to restart the system and show everyone. But right now, let's jump into App Center. All so right. App Center, if you don't have it, uh, if you don't have it turning on when your computer boots, you can actually find it in all programs under Gigabyte. Okay. Under Gigabyte and under App Center and you can open App Center. Right. For us here we already have it set up so we're just going to double click it. App Center pops up and we have a list of features right here in the scroll. So we're just going to go over some really briefly and then we'll dive in deeper with some other features. Okay, so I see at the top you have uh, BIOS, so you can actually update your BIOS straight from here? Right, so App BIOS is one of the programs that we've always had. It allows you to update your BIOS from your Windows settings. So a lot of people aren't very familiar or they're not very comfortable updating in the DOS setting or even in their UEFI BIOS. Okay. And this allows users to actually click point and choose what BIOS that they want to flash into their BIOS. Excellent. Okay. We also have USB blocker. Now this is a really neat feature because sometimes, you know, some people want to have, they want to keep their programs or they want to keep their files very private. Mm -hmm. This allows you to actually disable printers or uh, mass storage or other certain cards if you know, um, if you're in an office scene or if you're at home and you know maybe your sister has like a USB flash and you don't want her taking your files, you can actually lock this okay. or even in, you know, in dorms. So this is a way you can really lock down your system and prevent anyone from pulling data off of it. Correct. Okay. Okay, and as you can see it's asking me for a password and you can actually lock that down so even you can use it later on. Okay. We also have Cloud Station. Now this is a really neat one. Um, with everything going on to the mobile side of, of electronics, you mm -hmm. see cell phones, you know, we link to the cloud with Dropbox, with iCloud. These are all different things that, uh, that help you go about your day easier. And okay. with Gigabyte's Cloud Station, we actually created an application to allow for your system to put files in a cloud, so to say. Okay, so um, 
what sort of functions, um, as far as, is this, are you talking about general data storage here or actual uh, like elements of the motherboard control that you're... So we have motherboard control. Okay. And we also have uh, data storage. Basically, you're able to access your computer remotely. Okay. So you have your regular cloud. You have basically features like uh, remote, gigabyte remote, which allows you to use your mouse, tablet, um, sorry, your phone or tablet as an uh, input device. Okay. You also have remote overclocking. Nice. You have uh, basically an auto green, which allows you to actually remotely turn off or hibernate your system. Okay. And we also have a feature called hotspot, which basically it is what it is. If you do have a Wi-Fi enabled system, you can actually turn that around if you do have a LAN cable or some sort, and you can use your system as a Wi-Fi hotspot. Excellent. So um, if you were to say build a small system with one of the, maybe with the mini ITX boards and take it on the go with you, let's say you had a hotel that didn't have Wi-Fi, you can plug in the Ethernet and then set up a Wi-Fi spot, Correct. spot for the rest of your devices. Yes. Now, um, I'm guessing, is, is this the type of thing that you can access when you're external, when you're not in your home network? Yes. When you're not in your home network, we know the networking has always been an issue for some people. You know, they don't really understand port forwarding, how to connect to certain uh, devices in a home network via IP. What we have here, we actually have QR codes for you to scan. Oh, okay. So if you actually download the Gigabyte Cloud Station app, you can actually scan these QR codes. It'll link your phone or mobile device over to your desktop system. So it creates a unique QR code just unique for your... Unique QR, QR code. Excellent. For you. Very nice. All right. So this is Cloud Station for everyone to see. We also have, moving down, EasyTune. If you guys aren't familiar with EasyTune, this is our overclocking software suite. So you actually have easy ways to overclock. You can overclock it on the fly, preset buttons, okay. and we also have a status right here for everyone to see, Excellent. hardware monitors. And then you can also do the overclocking on your own. If you're more advanced at it, you're a more advanced overclocker with the know-how, you can actually change the settings to what you want. Excellent. So we have all the frequency features, voltage, uh, as well as even uh, since we we're dealing with integrated graphics, we also have the capability to, to overclock the iGPU as well. Correct. Excellent. All right. And moving on, we also have the easy setup. Now, a lot of people remember this from our Z77 era, Z68, mm -hmm. when uh, we started pushing smart response. Intel okay. smart response, if you're using an SSD, a smaller SSD and you have a mechanical, you can have them co-op together and have more of a hybrid drive setting. And this setup, um, this easy setup is basically a, a tool to do that. You can see that we can switch the disk mode right here automatically from IDE to AHCI. Very nice. We also have rapid start, which allows you to actually connect, use an, another SSD or another drive in that sense. Okay. And we also have Easy Smart Connect and XHD. XHD is basically our way of creating a RAID array for users who don't know how. Okay. And you can actually come in here, create the RAID array even after you've completed your Windows installation. OK, and uh, this is disabled for the time being, but. Um... It's disabled only because I don't have any other drives in the system. OK, so, so it's not actually, detecting anything for me to you, do it. You create need an array. to be RAID capable in order to You have to be RAID capable. All right, cool. Yes. All right. All right, Paul, and what else do we have here? Uh, next up, it looks like we have uh, fast boot options, which is always nice for getting your system up and running as quickly as possible. All right, and we do have fast boot, like Paul mentioned. We have disable, fast, ultra fast, depending on what you're looking for. Usually, most people just set the settings to the highest to what we have. Also, when you shut down your system with AC off mode, you can also shut down quick. I also want to mention one key feature here that uh, you see right here in the lower left, you see Enter BIOS Setup. So I'm going to click this for you guys right now, and it's going to show, I'm just going to show you what it does. Now, a lot of users who don't have the Direct to BIOS button or who have a hard time actually getting into BIOS when they're hitting that delete key, mm -hmm. this is a great feature for you because it'll actually shoot us, as you can see, right into the BIOS. Excellent. And so let's just spend a few minutes on the BIOS really quick. You can see that we did revamp the BIOS from our 8 series. This is our UEFI BIOS. Again, we're using dual BIOSes. So if you do have any malfunctions with the first, you can jump over to the second and restore your BIOS in your first primary BIOS. I love that feature. It's actually saved me on several occasions now. OK. Not only that, um, you can see that we're able to select all of these different settings. We have live readouts on the side, on the top, and also on the right of the system status. Okay. And another neat feature that you can do is you can actually create your own custom BIOS profile. So 
I'm clicking it right now. I'm just going to add some random features in here. VGA support, network stack, um, Windows 8 features. And save it, and it's all right here for you. So, so whenever you pull up your BIOS, basically, if you know there's a certain set of features or set of uh, things that you change most frequently, you can add them there right, right up front. And that's for convenience. And for okay. a lot of users who actually, you know, they're, <laughs> they're, they've used computers for a long time. They're not convenient with, uh, they're not familiar or they're not comfortable with the UEFI BIOS. You can always switch over to the other BIOS. This is our legacy BIOS, okay. and it gives you to that old legacy mode. Okay. So... For the uh, folks who like to get in there with the details and don't necessarily need the uh, the automated functions, you still got the right. uh, the old school mode as well. The old school mode. Excellent. Right here, so we're just going to jump out and uh, just to remind you guys, we did click that switch on that gigabyte sw uh, smart switch earlier, so mm -hmm. you guys can have a look and see what we boot into. Okay. All right. Let's see. So a quick Windows 8 load up. And um, as far as the, uh, the application, I'm guessing all of these are going to be available for download from the Gigabyte website? They will be for download on the Gigabyte website, and they will also be included in your driver disk. Okay. So when you actually do go about and installing your system, you'll actually find all of these functions in there. Um, it's simple because it's only one app. It's App Center, mm -hmm. and you're able to actually live update the app directly from the application itself, so you're actually not updating individual applications over and over again. Okay. In that case, it's totally fine even to load off of that driver disk that comes with the motherboard yes, because it'll, it'll actually update itself automatically afterwards. Yes, so we actually do have that live update at the bottom. Okay. So if you actually load it from the driver disk, you want to load it all at once, and then you want to just click that live update, it'll actually go through and update each application without you having to do it. Very nice. Okay, and other two new features uh, that we do have is Game Controller. Basically, it allows you to do some macro keys. If you don't have a fancy keyboard or if you don't have a fancy mouse, this does some macro storage for you. Okay. We also have sniper mode for your mouse, and also you can change your keyboard settings for if you're playing first-person shooters. This allows you to basically slow down your speed so you can actually have a more exact and precise uh, shot. And you could map that to a key on your keyboard, for example, so you hold that down and it goes Correct. into sniper mode. Excellent. So this is another cool feature we have. And then we have System Information Viewer right here. And this is just basically like any of the other information viewers you see, but we've built more on top of it. And of course, because it's made by Gigabyte and you're using a Gigabyte motherboard, why not? And so it's, uh, similar to folks might be familiar with like CPU-Z or that, that sort of thing, it's going to give you the status of the system as well as uh, stuff like the, uh, the motherboard you're using, which BIOS version that's up. Um, so if you see a new BIOS version on the Gigabyte website, you're not entirely sure what you're running. You can check it right here. Check it out. Excellent. And then we also have Smart Fan for those of you who like a quiet or more performance system. Okay. And for those more advanced users, you can actually modify your fan curve. Oh, nice. So you can actually see right now, I'm changing the fan curve, and that red dot... Let me see if I can... Red dot's get... blocking you. Yes, that red dot is <laughs> blocking me. That red dot is actually where the fan is right now. Okay. So you can make it faster, lower, depending on what kind of speed you want to hear from your fans or if you don't want to hear it at all. Excellent. And then lastly, we'll move into smart alerts. Basically, this is an alert system. We actually we were playing with it a few minutes ago, and it was driving us crazy. So we just <laughs> want to show you guys what it can do. If I actually drop my CPU to a certain level, and basically, this trigger saying, if the CPU is over zero degrees Celsius, this alarm is going to turn on. So I'm just going to apply it right now, and you're going to see it start kicking in. All right. So, so it warning. starts warning us. Uh, it, for the folks at home, we'd recommend probably setting this temperature to something above zero degrees Celsius, since most CPUs don't run at freezing. Um, but just for the sake of demonstration, <laughs> as you can see, it's going to pop up a warning. So um, definitely useful. And I would say in situations where maybe using something like a liquid cooling setup, or something like that, you know, for the potential for like a pump to fail or something like right. that, and suddenly your temperature starts start to spike, um, it'll let you know and uh, hopefully allow you to get in there and fix whatever the issue might be. All right, and we have two more features to show you guys, and definitely these are really neat features as well. We have a smart time lock. Basically, this allows you to actually limit the time that people use your system. Oh, okay. Unless they have a password, you can sh disable certain functions such as internet, keyboard, mouse, flash drive, or printer. So you can actually limit, if you do have kids at home, you don't want them surfing the web on certain days or times, you can change the settings right here. Excellent. All right. And another, one, right, and another one is Smart Recovery too.
Okay. So with a lot of uh, users, they actually build their systems up. You know, it's fresh, it's clean. There's no uh, cookies. It's not loaded with a lot of application, and that's the way you want it. You can actually do that image right after you've saved your system. You've built your system. You've installed the operating system. You've loaded all your essential applications. You can actually do a restore, a backup of it. And whenever you need to, you can actually recover to that backup. So just like how you would any OEM Dell restore disk, you can make your own. OK, so um, would this prompt you to say backup to, would you have the option to go with like an optical drive media or uh, external drive or something like that? You can back up to on a file, okay. and you can burn that image out. OK. So and that's then, definitely uh, a good choice. And then as far as uh, recovery, um, to like if you let's say you had a, a SSD dry, uh, die or something like that and you wanted to recover from the file, um, is there a capability to create a, a bootable drive or something to that effect? You can def well, you would have to load this software because this software has to run from uh, the software has to run from Windows. But okay. you can choose how you do your file recovery. Okay. You can recover from the backup image, or or you can you can recover from the file or recover your computer depending okay. on what you want to do. All right, excellent. So another nice fe feature there, and I know Smart Recovery too. Um, I've I've used the the built-in Windows uh, image system before, and it definitely has some quirks about yes. it. Uh, for example, I always have to boot off an, off an optical drive to restore, otherwise it tends to get a little frustrating. Um, so definitely nice to have that bonus feature there as well. Yes, and so again with, uh, with this, this is some of our software suites. We do have the Gigabyte App Center, Gigabyte Smart Switch, which, which is immensely useful for mm -hmm. users who are still com using the Windows 7 and they're, they don't really want to switch over the Windows 8 or 8.1. Excellent. So uh, that's been a rundown of the App Center as well as a quick look at the UEFI. Again, this should apply to pretty much every Z97 board in the Gigabytes lineup. Right. And uh, Leon, thank you so much again for stopping by today. Thanks for having me again. And thanks to all you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button down in the like button area, as well as the comment section is down there too. So leave us a comment. Let us know what you think of the App Center. And let Leon know for the next generation, for the updates, what else could they possibly right. cram into here? Because there's a lot of functionality in there as, as there is, but there's always other things that could be done. So let us know what you think. We love to hear feedback. Also, if you want to let us know uh, more directly, you can reach us at gigabyte.us or check out our Facebook page. We're always actively monitoring our Facebook at uh, Gigabyte USA. Excellent. And thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you all next time.